Badger fans, what is the Wisconsin basketball brand nationally and what are reasonable expectations for this season? Badgers basketball tipping off tonight. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger basketball fans? Welcome to Lockdown Badgers, your team every single day. I'm your host, Ryan Herring. It's part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Really do appreciate every person for tuning in. As always, y'all are incredible. Thank you. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. New customers bet $5 to get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com to get started. And let's go. We got a great guest today. We got Brandon Harrison jumping on the show. Com- uh, communications Director for Men's Basketball has been been there since 2014, really since the the – the glory runs of 14-15. What was yeah. that like? Yeah, maybe I can take a little bit of credit for that. I don't know. My first year, the bar was set pretty darn high. Uh, yeah, I'm a Wisconsin native through and through. I went to school at the University of Wisconsin. I graduated back in 2013. Uh, I spent one year away. I was at Arkansas, actually, working in communications for their athletic department as well. Uh, and then, yeah, my first year back, it worked out coincidentally, was the second Final Four run. Uh, knocking off Kentucky, undefeated, and then playing Duke. Could have used one more win that season, obviously, but... We'll leave it at what it was that year. Uh, but yeah, the bar was set pretty darn high my first season with the uh, with the program. Let me really, because I have a whole bunch of things we're going to get into. And with great guests, I always say this, we're going to run out of time before we run out of questions. But I almost want to start with that because we just recently, last week, we were in town for the Penn State game two weeks ago. We did a rewatch. We got some Badger fans together. We rewatched the Wisconsin-Kentucky game. What is that game to you knowing what happened next? Like, So I think there's some Badger fans that, they can't fully appreciate that that win against Kentucky because of what happened next. Yeah, it, I understand it. It's tough. Uh, coupling it with the Duke loss and the two days after, it, it kind of is a little bit of a letdown. But just appreciating the culmination of that. I mean, it was a storybook story, the way it all played out, where you've got them losing to Kentucky the year prior and then kind of working their way back, having almost a similar run in the NCAA tournament, knocking off Arizona again to get to another Final Four. Uh, it'll be great to have Arizona here at the Cole Center this year mm-hmm. when we host them, and we'll actually be bringing back some of our Final Four teams, uh, the players and also Coach Ryan. Uh, at halftime, we'll have a great uh, banner uh, raising for Coach Ryan to celebrate him. But yeah, I understand how obviously two days after it kind of is a little bit of a sting and you always think uh, if we would have had one more win that season. I know I just mentioned it myself, but just appreciating what they were able to do that season was incredible. Um, the way that I always appreciate it too. I mean, it's one thing to have those expectations, but then to live up to them. I remember starting this job and the person before me essentially said, you're going to have one heck of a team. You should have one heck of a run. You never know how it's going to play out, but hopefully you have similar success to what I did the year before. This is what the person that preceded me said. And sure enough, we essentially had almost a carbon copy run, um, won a Big Ten title along the way, tournament title, uh, and then knocking off an undefeated Kentucky team like that, which was loaded with uh, NBA talent and just, just a really fun team. But obviously what they did off the court too made it just as memorable, especially for me being in communications and Working with them and all their uh, hijinks and the media relations uh, field was was an interesting first exposure to working in communications, uh, specifically here at Wisconsin, too. Yeah, what an entry, man, With because that group was just colorful. They were fun. They were energetic. They were unique. I think America loved it. Listen, everybody in America outside of that small pocket around Duke was rooting for Wisconsin. Like, there was not a, a team that was more rooted for because um, it was built the right way. Bo Ryan deserved it. Yeah. Let, I want to move on, though, because we could spend an entire – literally an entire episode on that team. Um, I want to talk about this. We got a couple of questions from people who knew you're going to be on and a couple of questions just revolved around what is the Wisconsin Badgers basketball brand? Like what is the goal for the brand? Where does it sit nationally? Where does it sit in the big 10? I know you're heavily involved in kind of building that communications platform. What is Wisconsin Badgers basketball? Yeah, it's a great question. I think for us, we're really fortunate and we have a consistent track record of success that dates back to Coach Ryan and even a little bit before that um, with Dick Bennett and what they did in the Final Four run to kind of set the stage. And really, it was a launching point for when Coach Ryan and Greg Gard, as an associate head coach, came in. And we've been really fortunate. We've had a consistent success, certainly throughout my 10 years. I've been blessed, I feel, to work with this program and been a part of some great runs. Um, but I think it's about the people, too representing this university now more than ever. I feel like that's something that, yes, you have to adapt, you have to change. And our staff has done a good job of evolving our brand a little bit to kind of meet the new landscape. But at the same time, we're still very rooted in what we are. We represent this university, the state, kind of that blue collar nature. Um, you can control the, the things that you can control and then there are the uncontrollables. And I think we always hang our hat on controlling the things you can control, effort, energy, 
battling for rebounds, things like that. Um, I know it might sound cliche. It might sound kind of um, dry to some people and it's not flashy and exciting, but at the end of the day, it wins. And it's worked for years here at Wisconsin. And it's a, it's a brand and an identity that we should be proud of. And I know the players are really proud to be part of it. Um, frankly, it's, it's a reason we get a lot of these guys to come here is because of the draw of the brand and playing in the Big Ten, which obviously now more than ever is such a big conference, um, really us and SEC and maybe one or two others kind of major conferences with a plethora of teams. Um, so there's that draw and playing in the Big Ten and representing the Big Ten University. But um, consistent success is really a great thing for us. And uh, we're fortunate to have a great fan base, people that are interested in us and support us. Um, certainly tonight, moving forward this season, we're blessed to have the, the reception with the Cole Center and the turnout we always have year in and year out. We're nationally ranked in, in the top in terms of average attendance every year. Um, so there's a lot to be proud of when you play for the Wisconsin Badgers. And I think now more than ever, we still really try to stress that to these guys uh, when they enter our program, especially the ones that might be here for a year or two. Transfers, um, obviously the freshmen that are just coming in, but uh, it's a long-winded way of me saying it's a very consistent program. There's a lot of success, and we do it our way. And I think we take a lot of pride in the way that we do it. Let me talk about the consistent success. And do you, it feels like that. And I've said this before. I'm not just saying this because you're on. It feels like that aspect of the program gets overlooked because it's so easy just to look at March, right? I, I've made the argument like this team was a five seed last year, beat yeah. Purdue. That's a really good year. And it just, you lose that one game in March to JMU, and that was a bad game. I think everybody would acknowledge Wisconsin should play better there. Do you think the consistent success gets a little overlooked when you start looking at through the lens of March? I certainly like to think so. Um, Even, frankly, as a fan. I mean, like I said, I'm I'm from the state of Wisconsin. Before I worked here, just observing the program, Coach Ryan, what he did with this team. I know, yeah, you hang your hat a lot on what happens in March, and that's a blessing and a curse because it's great when you get there consistently. But then if you don't have those deep runs every single time, um, some might have a different perception or an outlook on what the year really was and the success that you had. But yeah, to your point, I mean, when you've won two big Ted titles in the last five years, you're obviously doing something right. You're winning at a really good conference. And when you consistently get to the tournament and at least have a chance, I know there's always that thing. Oh, we're always, you know, we're in the big dance and we can't quite break through. Or we're in those big games and we can't quite always win them. It's a good problem to have if you're always in those big yeah. games consistently. Um, so, yeah, I understand that it can be frustrating, especially if you're looking back at a year like last year. Obviously, that's not what the team wanted. That's not what the coaches wanted. They expected more and, and thought that they were capable of more. Uh, but sometimes it's just the way the ball bounces and um, it, it might not always go your way. So, yeah, it can be tough to deal with. But uh, you try to look at the whole picture when you can. And frankly, that's part of my job is to hopefully help people view it that way and really appreciate the success that is had as a whole. Yeah, I did a show yesterday. Uh, Cole Edmondson from Busting Brackets came on, and he he made a really good analogy, I thought. He said, listen, tournament's like chopping wood. You just got to keep chopping wood. You mm-hmm. just got to keep giving yourself an opportunity to be there, and eventually it's going to bounce your way. And I do think the consistent success gets overlooked, right? I, I just think there's a lot of programs that, quite frankly, would kill to be a 5 seed, would kill to be in the tournament, would kill to be in a position to be able to be upset by a 12 seed. Like, you, you got to be there to be in that position for it to happen. I want to ask you this. What are the expectations for this year? big picture kind of, and what should year to year expectations at a program like Wisconsin be? Yeah. I mean, I won't speak to the internal expectations. I think this team and this group always has their own idea of what they want to accomplish. And usually that's a lot higher than what people might think. I do think that this group is a lot more talented than some people are expecting, but there's also a lot of other teams around the country that are probably saying the same thing just because of this I know Coach Guard always mentions the transient nature of of the way things are changing and the rosters and everybody has a new outlook on their season because of the new additions, uh, people that might have departed. So I think the internal expectations are are encouraging for this group. I know that they're really excited. Personally, having seen practices and talking to our coaching staff, I know they're excited about the potential of this group. And I think this is a really strong, intriguing roster with some great additions that can play um, significant roles potentially. So it's just going to be how it all comes together, how these guys gel, how they fit in. And it's going to be a process, I think, compared to past seasons where we might have hit the ground running a little earlier because of our experience and because we might bring back four or five starters. It's a little easier for us to kind of take off early and have that nice start to the season. I think this year, potentially, it could be a little more of a learning back and forth, up and down a little bit. Um, It'll be interesting to see how it comes together. But again, if there's one thing that I've found is I'll certainly never be one to doubt this program out. I think we always give ourselves a chance uh, just because of the way that we play and we take care of the things we can control. Um, And I think it'll set this team up again this season for another uh, another successful year, hopefully. 
Yeah, I think you make a really good point there. I, this team does feel like it might be a bit of a slow burn in terms of it's going to get better as the season goes on, as rotations kind of get fleshed out a little bit, roles get fleshed out. A lot of new pieces um, that are yeah. going to have to come in and play, and that's not going to click right away, especially at a place like Wisconsin, which, like, let's just be honest, some other I think there's programs out there that you more so, for lack of a better term, just roll the ball out. You're going to play fast. In Wisconsin, there's rules in place. you got to play defense a certain way. There's some rotations we value. It just takes a little bit longer, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I agree. I was just going to jump in and say that. I think this year you're going to notice that with uh, the the transfers that we have coming in, three transfers, and then obviously true freshmen joining us as well. But yeah, there is that learning curve for anybody new to any program. But I do agree with you, Ryan, that I think at Wisconsin, because of the way we operate, the way we uh, hold guys to certain expectations and standards, sometimes it does take them a little bit longer to get acclimated and, and get familiar with that. But I don't certainly think that that's a negative thing. I think that's just the the expectation at Wisconsin uh, is, is pretty darn high every year. And the standard that we set for these guys in this program is really darn high. And it usually pans out well, it bodes well for the team because of the way we, we handle it that way. So. Yeah, we're going to talk about some of those new offseason faces coming up next on Lockdown Badgers and how that offseason kind of came together with Brandon Harrison. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show over at Five Hour Energy. Five Hour Energy, listen, being a fan is hard. Like, it's there's a lot of great with it, but sometimes being a fan takes energy, right? Getting the, the game day set up, tailgating, all of those things, powering through the weekend, especially with college basketball starting. You have college football, college basketball, NFL if you're into it, NBA, which I'm still in. It's a lot. Like it takes a lot of work. That's why Five Hour Energy is here to fuel your fandom. Limited edition Stand the Fan Five Hour Energy 12 pack is here to help you get through everything that is required of being a true fan. Five Hour Energy knows that no matter what team you root for, being a fan requires heart, it requires soul, and a whole lot of energy. Whether you're prepping for the big tailgate, ironing your jersey, your game day list is a mile long. That's why the limited edition Stand the Fan Five Hour Energy shot is here to help you fuel through the season. Whatever you're fanning, fan fuel is here for you this year. Whatever you do, do it with a 5-Hour Energy, available on 5-HourEnergy.com, shipped nationwide. All right, let's jump back into this awesome conversation. Talk a little bit about that offseason with Brendan Harrison. And again, uh, Brendan Harrison joined us, Wisconsin Basketball Director of Communications. Brendan, I do want to give you an opportunity. Where can people either follow you, follow the program? I think everybody probably follows Wisconsin Basketball on Twitter, but anywhere else? Uh, yeah, I would just suggest following us on social media, the team at Badger MBB, pretty much across the board. Um, that's usually where people can find the great stuff. UWBadgers.com is our website, um, tickets, information, anything you need there. So yeah, those are your, your two best sources. I'm, I, I'm the guy behind the guy or the team, so I'm not here to plug myself. I'm happy to be on, but yeah, if you're asking me to plug something, follow the team. I think it's going to be a fun year and there's a lot of, uh, fun stuff we'll be able to share throughout the season. Now, and before we kind of talk about tonight's game and what the vibe is right now, let's go to the offseason. This is a program that the more or less degree has been a little insulated from the transfer portal era up until this last year. I think Wisconsin fans will, will, would agree with that. And then you lose a Chucky Heffern, a guy who'd been here for three years to Louisville. You see an AJ Store who'd been here a year, but he leaves to Kansas. And then you also bring in a Hunter and uh, 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 Xavier Amos, right? You bring in a, a John Tanjay. What was it like inside the room kind of seeing that? that off season unfold. Yeah, I think we're, um, like you said, we were insulated for a long period of time there, but us like many programs are now kind of adjusting and, and growing and learning how to kind of roll with the punches when some of the stuff happens. Um, one thing I'll say is those guys like Chucky, there's, there's certainly never been any ill will. And uh, I know the coaches still try to reach out and stay in touch with them. Um, it, it's been good to, to, to see that that's not like Bridges were burned and there's no ill will or anything. But yeah, there comes a point where with the way things are changing, guys have other opportunities presented to them and you wish them well and, and hope that things work out for them. Um, so it'll be interesting to follow those guys and obviously AJ Store Kansas and, and seeing how that goes for them. But yeah, it was an interesting off season to say the least, uh, like it probably was for many other schools around the country. Um, I give our staff a lot of credit. I thought they did a really nice job of handling it, um, kind of rolling with the said punches and figuring things out um, on the fly because there really is no playbook. And I know Coach Guard has talked about it. You kind of have to operate right now on a year-to-year -year basis with your roster and figure things out as you go. Um, so they kind of had to rebuild and retool and, and find some new additions. And I know they're really excited about the three transfers that they brought in um, and couple that with the true freshman class that they have coming in as well. There's some exciting and intriguing talent in there too. So uh, it was an interesting offseason for sure, but I think they they did a great job. It was it was, it was interesting to see how it all worked. I know there's been some stuff out there where Coach Gard has talked about it, but it was essentially kind of almost a war room at times where they're sitting there like a NFL draft room or something, and you kind of have all the coaches at a table. And I was not in said room, but obviously coaches shared some of that and put it out there. But I know they were very intentional about 
how they reached out to, to certain people and who they pursued. And um, I think they're really happy with the three guys that they have. And so far, based on what we've seen in early preseason, each of them provides uh, a really nice, th- they're great additions to this team. I think they're each going to find their way and find their role. Well, I want to hit this narrative because I think there's a narrative out there, and you and I have talked about this kind of offline, that Greg Gard isn't an adaptable coach. And I actually think he's he's shown a lot, like going out and getting an AJ store right last year, going out and attacking the portal this offseason. Uh, the offense has adjusted. Uh, we we talked about it before the, the show. How many times a year am I going to hear the Badgers running the swing again? And they don't run the swing. Like The offense has adapted. Uh, there's new staff members for uh, player development. I actually don't think Gregor gets enough credit there for being a coach who has actually evolved throughout his time here. Yeah, I, I laugh because that's a little bit on me. If if the TV announcers are repetitively talking about swing offense and this and that, or or I know a lot of people would always joke about how Brad Davison, every single game he played, it would be talked about how he used to be a high school quarterback or things like that, like those those dry narratives that they use over and over. I guess that's on me. I got to keep drilling in and reminding them that some of these things have changed. Or, hey, there are other things to these guys that you mm-hmm. can talk about or mention. Um, yeah, I, I think to your point, it, it, he's done a really good job. Coach Guard has of adapting and evolving. Um, I know he's been out there talking about that and some of the changes specifically to the staff that he's made and the additions that we have on our staff. He's really retooled it. And again, to his credit to kind of follow a professional model now where you bring in guys with different uh, sets of experience and different ways that they can contribute on staff. Um, bringing in a guy like Greg Steemsma, I think is a really underrated addition to this team. Having somebody that has NBA experience like he does, working with some of the best athletes in the world, um, in Minnesota, the Spurs, uh, he has brought a lot to this team and obviously is familiar with our program, having played here. I think that's another unique thing about how coaches approach this too is he's evolving but not completely abandoning what we're about. So you're still staying tied to what makes Wisconsin basketball great and you still have guys in the room that are preaching and coaching and working with our athletes and together really to just make sure that we keep that standard and expectation alive and they can speak to some of that and what's made this program so successful. But at the same time, they're bringing in some experience. A guy like Kirk Penny has oodles Mm -hmm. of international experience. So international recruiting certainly could be a bigger avenue moving forward. I think Coach has talked about that. But yeah, to Coach's credit, um, I agree. I feel like he's done a really nice job of evolving and changing the way that we operate while still staying true to Wisconsin and what's made this program so successful. And I think it spoke really well to Troy had a question. What have the new assistants brought to the table, the new coaching staff? I think it speaks really well to that question. Uh, let's speak a little bit more about those three transfer guys coming in. What's maybe something quickly that you can kind of prime? A lot, because a lot of Bears fans don't have the opportunity to see practice or maybe weren't able to see the scrimmage against UW River Falls. What's kind of a primer on those three guys coming in that you've seen since they've been here? Yeah, John Tanjay, I'll mention him first. I know he started the other night for us in the exhibition. He's done a really nice job of jumping in. Obviously, he's a guy that right when he walks in the door, he brings a ton of experience with him, having played at three different schools, over 100 games. Um, He brings a ton of experience. So I know Coach has talked about this, but he plays already just at a level that's different than the other guys, and the game is so much slower to him. Not a lot really surprises him. There are some things that he still needs to learn and adapt to, certainly being with us now um, and just playing in the Big Ten, things will be different. But he brings so much experience. Um, Certainly his three-point shooting is a great addition to our team. I think this year you'll notice that, and Coach mentioned that the other night, that we'll be shooting a lot more threes this season, and that's definitely intentional, um, just on the makeup of our team and the roster and really the way that the game is changing and going. So um, bringing in a guy like John Tanjay, who has that outside shooting presence, but he's also a big guard, like big physically. Um, he does a great job of getting the basket. I know in the exhibition the other night, he got to the free throw line a ton. So while we might be shooting more threes, we certainly still want to get to the basket draw fouls, get inside. Um, so John Tanjay is great in that area. Cameron Hunter, big guard. Physically, they feel like he's going to step right in and he won't miss a beat when he plays in the Big Ten just because of his big physical nature. Um, I know looking at his stats, I admittedly haven't like broken down film like a coach would, but it sure seems like he has a knack for rebounding for a guard his size. Um, so I, physically, he's not afraid to get his nose in there. I know coaches have talked about that, but um, coming in, especially when you are coming in as a point guard for any program, but even ours, there's a, a learning and an acclimation process. So 
him working his way into that and finding his uh, his way into the rotation will be something to kind of watch throughout the season. But um, he's been a great addition, really nice guy. Frankly, all three have been awesome presences to the locker room, just really well-spoken individuals. Um, they fit in really well, so it's obviously a big component of this too. And uh, Xavier Amos, another exciting prospect uh, for a guy his size with his length. He can shoot it outside while also playing down low inside too. Um, I think Coach Guard and some of our other staff have mentioned it, but what he brings, um, they were kind of pleasantly surprised offensively. He, he can do a little bit more than they were expecting. Um, so he's an exciting addition to the staff for sure. Talk about Hunter for just one second, because earlier in the show, we talked about the Wisconsin brand and just how big of a deal it can be. When I had the opportunity to talk to Cameron Hunter, you could just tell he is a grateful, humble. It just feels like an incredible locker room guy. Yeah, Cameron Hunter's been awesome. Um, he was one of the first transfers that I actually got to chat with when he first signed. Uh, I believe he was our first transfer. So uh, one of the first guys that I got to interact with um, and, and get to know, great individual. That, frankly, is one of the things that I enjoy most about this job is really getting to know these guys off the court too, learn a little bit about them, their demeanor, um, things that they take pride in. Uh, because frankly, there's more to just them being basketball players. Um, they're also people and they have great stories to tell, um, interesting things that we can help share or help them share themselves. Um, so Cameron's one of those guys, been an awesome locker room addition, but yeah, like you mentioned, um, just acclimating and getting familiar and same for a guy like Daniel Freetag as a true freshman point guard, there's going to be kind of a, an acclimation process and getting him involved, but the intangibles and the skill set are definitely there for a guy like Daniel Freetag. I know he's a really exciting prospect and the coaches we're eager to kind of get their hands on him and work with him. And he's lived up to that bill. Like you can see the potential he'll make plays in practice or some of our scrimmages that, whoa, you kind of open your eyes. Like, all right. Yeah. He does things a little different than some guys. Um, but again, just finding that, that process of acclimation and getting familiar and kind of settling in and having the game slow down, I think will be a big thing too, for, for a guy like Daniel. All right, come on. We're going to keep Brandon on for one more segment again. I could talk to him for hours, but I know he's got to get going. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, free tag Blackwell and take a few of the other questions you guys submitted. That's coming up next on Lockdown Badgers. One more quick second for our friends of the show over at FanDuel. FanDuel remains the number one source for all your sports betting needs, the official sports book of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Once again, please do it safely, responsibly, as always, but a great place for parlays, futures, teaser spreads. NBA's going, uh, NFL, college basketball starting up tonight. Obviously, um, college football going on as well. Great plot spot for Really, what, if you're trying to spice up your sports weekend, again, do it responsibly. $150, will, you'll get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed if your first $5 bet wins. That's where at FanDuel.com, the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, let's jump back into this, uh, finish off this conversation with Brandon. Again, really, really grateful for the time. Um, I, wanted, I wanted to go here. You mentioned Daniel Freetag, and I was going to bring him up in a second. How Fans are all, always going to get excited for an athletic four-star point guard. Uh, the film in high school is incredible. It's important to remember he's a freshman, right? And I wanted to take that comment and dive it into, I think this team is deeper than it's been the last couple of years as well. There's going to be a battle for playing time. And I think fans are going to see some rotations flesh out over the first couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, like you just said, it's a deep rotation. There's a lot of options and different uh, variety to how coach can go about it. I know he's mentioned that, that he's frankly still kind of figuring it out and playing around and tweaking a little bit with lineups and rotation minutes, figuring all that out. So yeah, for a guy like Daniel, I know right now, um, just having been around him, it seems like he is being as much of a sponge as he can be. He's just absorbing everything. Um, frankly, we were having pregame meal, I believe it was before the exhibition. And uh, I'm, I'm sitting there in the room and Daniel's at the table with me. He's talking to Coach Randall and they're kind of going over some plays and he's asking him things even just in that setting. So you can tell he's trying to learn as much as he can on the fly and figure it out while still just trying to slow down and let the game come to him a little bit. Um, but yeah, super exciting. Great individual too. He's been awesome to be around. He's a really great personality. So um, it'll be exciting for fans to start to get to see more of that as he's um, just around and doing engagements or you'll see him on TV from time to time, certainly interview opportunities. But um, yeah, Daniel's been great. Talking about uh, John Blackwell, the other guy I wanted to hit on quick, a lot of expectations for him coming off a really good freshman year into this year. A lot of kind of buzz about what he's done in the offseason. What makes him special? Why is he a unique piece to this team? Yeah, he's been a fun one. Um, 
I think even last year, one of the first things I noticed was he has just such a smooth game and it feels like he plays at such a slow speed or pace. It's just so fluid and smooth the way he operates, um, but it's effective and he gets to his spots so well and he he can get a shot off. And it, it felt that way even from the jump when he came in as a true freshman. So now for him being able to take that next step going into this season of becoming the guy. I mean, last year when he's here, there's veterans in front of him. He's certainly just trying to carve out any minutes he can in the rotation. He certainly did a great job of that. But now with some of the departures and the way that things are tweaked and changed, he is essentially, he has the opportunity to be the guy for us. And it feels like he's definitely embraced that role, um, not only just on the court with his play, but vocally as a team leader um, for, a, for a true sophomore, second year guy in this program. He has not been shy about speaking up, um, really leading this team. So it's been fun to see that because if he's embracing that side of things, um, it feels like the rest will come too because we know what we have in his game. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it continues to play out. But yeah, super exciting um, to see what he'll do this year. Obviously, he shot the three really well last season. Uh, we'll see how that continues to, to play out this year, but just a really well-rounded player and certainly fits what this program loves to do really well. Uh, a couple of questions we got from people I want to hit really quickly as we wrap this up. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce the name. Uh, TH3TA Mail said, uh, how do you balance student media interactions while honoring your voice, but also kind of understanding that there's a brand um, that you have to protect in a way as well? Yeah, I think I kind of mentioned it earlier, one of the, the answers or our conversation earlier, but I think for me, one of the great things about this job is getting to know these guys, um, not only as players, but also as people and getting to find out things that they're passionate about, um, things that they embrace. I think now more than ever, social media and um, personal branding is obviously such a huge part of NIL opportunities, um, just the way that you are seen, the way that you put yourself out there. Um, we talk about it all the time with these guys, but when they come in here, I don't care if you're a walk-on or if you are a five-star recruit, you, you come in and you're now part of Wisconsin basketball. And because of that, you have such this um, uh, much larger reach and much more opportunity. Um, there's, there's a lot of chances to do different things that you would not have otherwise because you are a Wisconsin Badger. But a lot of these guys come in um, already kind of ahead of the curve on a lot of that stuff. It's been fun. This is my 10th season now working with the team, which is hard to believe when I say that out loud, but it's my 10th season now. And, Early in my uh, career here, social media was kind of budding and it was just taken off and Twitter was a thing. And um, certainly with that Final Four team with Frank Kaminsky, Sam Decker, Nigel Hayes, like all the shenanigans they had and the, the personality and presence they had off the court, it really came through on social media. And so that was an opportunity for me to really see how impactful it can be when you um, share on social media, but do it in a way where you're putting things out there that um, really give people an insight as to who you are and what you care about. And so we really preach that to these guys that they have a huge opportunity now when they come in and they, they kind of wear that W, they're Wisconsin Badgers, they have the Wisconsin across their chest. What they do with this opportunity and how they portray themselves and how they represent not only themselves, but the university uh, is a really big part of, of what I try to help them figure out along the way. Um, so yeah, if there are guys that have certain things that they want to be advocates for or speak out to, um, it's my responsibility to kind of help them hone and craft that if they want to work with me on that. And if they're comfortable doing so. Um, but I'd like to think too, that we also just through networking and career, and I've been here, like I said, 10 years, I know a lot of different people within the industry now, maybe we can help set them up for some different interviews where they can speak to some of these things that they want to talk about, they're passionate about, um, find opportunities for them to do that. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a fun part of the job that outside of just stats, notes, numbers, um, it's also fun to really get to know these athletes and people and help them uh, kind of share in everything that makes them successful and unique. It makes it more about bas more than just basketball, right? It's like kind of building the the entirety around it. Um, question from Thais, how many more episodes of Ball Access are there going to be? Is that something that can continue happening? Um, yeah, just kind of question there. Yeah, that was a really fun opportunity. Um, that was something that we were approached about doing this off season. And um, we definitely felt like a win-win and a great opportunity. Um, they are done now. There was the three episodes this season and we were one of the first uh, teams here at Wisconsin to kind of help pilot that program that that is taking place. Um, there'll be more in the works. Uh, I don't think there'll be any more with basketball necessarily this season, but you might see some more content and some video series pop up uh, kind of within that umbrella, that all access umbrella. Uh, but yeah, really cool opportunity. Again, kind of going back to the last question to give people not only an inside look at the program, but also hear from some of the people. Now more than ever, we've got so many new voices and faces on this team. It's a great opportunity just to sit them down or 
put a mic on a coach and practice and get some, some personality to him too. But um, hopefully, yeah, that was well received. And I know that um, it's something too that coach guard to his credit has really evolved on and he doesn't have to do anything like that. He doesn't have to allow, you know, cameras to be around this team and inside. And especially in a year like this, where you're trying to figure out so much and there is so much change. He could have just said, yeah, you know what, we're going to focus on us. We don't need all these distractions. Some coaches take that approach. Um, but to coach guard's credit, I think he sees the value and understands that not only sharing that is um, great for fans, but also recruits and, and otherwise. So uh, yeah, really cool series. Hopefully it was well received and, that's it for basketball this season, but you might see some more pop up later. Yeah, I think it was really, I, from people I've talked to. They really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. I know you get shoot around coming up in a, in a few minutes here, so I'm going to get you out on a couple lightning questions. Um, speaking <laughs> of shoot around, who, if you lined everybody up on this team right now, who would be the betting favorite to win a three point contest? Oh, that's a good question. Honestly, Jack and Nikki, I believe when I walked past the locker room, um, on our board, we have, I could be wrong, it might have changed by now, but they'll have different shooting drills. And I think one of them was just a straight up three-point shooting drill, if I was reading it correctly. And Jack and Nikki was the top on that one. Um, I know you and others, uh, maybe it's you or others talk about like penny stocks uh, for guys. Yeah. If you're going to take one out at any point, uh, Jack Nicky is a guy that people, I know we haven't talked about him. Um, he was a red shirt last season, but he is one to watch. The coaching staff loves him, um, not only for his shooting and offensively, like he, he, he's a nice player, but he fits that mold. Coach Guard has mentioned him being kind of like a, a Josh Gosser, his actual alter, like just a really hard nosed guy who will do whatever it takes to win really get great team player. Um, he's best buds with John Blackwell on the team. So I know John just gushes about him when he talks about him, but um, really keep an eye on Jackson. Nicky. I think he'll be one to watch, but I might, I might take him based on what I've seen on the, on the board in the locker room. Yeah. He's, you know, it's funny. Cause I saw him when he came in, I was watching film. He seems like he's almost a little bigger than I thought he was, but he moves pretty well. He shoots great. He's feisty. Like seeing him in practice, man, there's actually a lot there. That's kind of interesting. I agree with you. Um, going back to your entire time at the Badgers now, you had to kick the ball into the corner for one guy down two points. Going back to 2015, who do you want taking that shot? I think it has to be Bronson Koenig, no? I mean, not only based on what we've seen, um, certainly during my stretch, but yeah, I, for my money, yeah, it would be Bronson Koenig. He inevitably was just such a clutch shooter. It felt like anytime we needed a bucket, he would end up with the ball and he would always deliver. Like if he put it up, I felt like it was good every time. Um, I feel like he was, everybody knows the, the shout out to beat Xavier, but yeah, just so many great clutch shots down the stretch. Um, probably go with Bronson Koenig. Yeah, that's a great one. Better post player, Ethan Happ or Frank Kaminsky? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to answer it, but one thing I'm going to say is Ethan Happ has to be one of the like most – I don't say underappreciated because there were plenty of people out there that appreciate Ethan Happ and everything he did, but it's ridiculous when you look at the the career that Ethan Happ had here at Wisconsin, uh, the numbers he put up, what he accomplished. It's unbelievable. Like he's top five in program history in points, rebounds, steals. I'm probably forgetting a category assists. Like he's, it's unbelievable what he did. Um, Now that doesn't answer the question about post play. I'll say this. I'll probably give it to Frank because um, national player of the year, but also whatever Ethan learned in part might've been going up against Frank for all those years um, and in practice when he redshirted. So um, both great players, but yeah, Ethan had such good uh, post moves and his footwork was awesome. He could just spin around the basket like five or six times and you feel like, all right, just pass it out. Where's this going? And then he would find a way to twist and contort his body and get it up and in. So um, I'm talking myself out of my answer now. Maybe, maybe it was Ethan Hat, but (laughs) um, we'll, we'll, we'll stick with Frank for now. No, there's no wrong answer there. And you're, you're totally right. And you actually kind of answered my next question, which was the one I was going to end with. But take take Ethan out of it. Most underappreciated Badger in the last 10 years. And maybe Ethan wasn't the answer anyway. But who's another guy you look at and you're like, he just doesn't get the credit he deserves? Man, that's a good question. I mean, I would have definitely said Ethan Happ. Um, outside of Ethan Happ? I do think guys like Josh Gosser's actual alter, I know it's a cliche and we throw it around so much and coach guard, even like I said, with Jack Janicki, like he will compare players in that mold or that skill set to guys like that. I feel like they, for what they do for the program, they're so essential. Those final four teams are not as good as they were without guys like Josh Gosser or mm-hmm. a Zach Showalter in ensuing years when we were making sweet 16s. Like you need, players like that and they don't get all the the headlines. They're not at the top of the scouting report, but, what they do for the team, um, not only on the court, but just as leaders, 
just great players. So I guess during my tenure, I would probably lean if you're not going to let me say Ethan Happ. So one of those two guys, potentially. Um, I know Josh Gosser was beloved uh, fan favorite, obviously a great player for us, um, did do a lot, but I don't know that he got as much praise as maybe he should have gotten. Yeah, that's a great answer. I've always kind of thought Nigel Hayes slipped a little under the radar just because defensively he was so good and he was such a good passer. He could do so many little connecting things on the court that I don't know if you're just watching the game. If you see like teams can play zone against us because of Nigel Hayes, you just throw it to mm-hmm. them and he would make it every time. But those are great answers as well. Brandon, I've already kept you a few minutes longer than I said I would. I know you got a shoot around coming up, man. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate this. Definitely excited to watch tonight, man. And hopefully we can connect again on a future show. Yeah, appreciate you having me on. Thanks again. And uh, yeah, stay tuned this year. I think it's a really intriguing team and people are going to be, it's going to be a fun team to watch as they kind of figure things out and evolve and grow together throughout the season. So um, definitely do not count this group out. If there's one thing we've learned from past years, you don't want to do that on this program, but I think people could be pleasantly surprised this season. Yeah, I can't wait, man. For everybody tuning in, thank you so much. Uh, Tons of content coming up this week. Obviously, we'll do a live reaction show after tonight's game as well on Wisconsin, and we will talk later.